Welcome to the second episode of One of One. Today, I am here with a very, very multi-talented female. <laughs> this beautiful girl, her name is Tina Mozondo. Did I say that right? Yes. She is, so now when I was looking you up, I figured you're not just a singer, because how I got to know about you was because I saw you perform, mm -hmm. and I thought, wow. I was like, oh yeah, this girl is talented. I was like, wow. And then when I looked you up, you're not only a musician, you're a songwriter, you're a dancer, you're a poet, you're a writer, you're an aspiring actress as well. What can you not do? <laughs> Clean my room. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this girl is super talented. I am so Thank honored you. that you're here today. So now when I looked you up, you were born in Zimbabwe, yes. and then you were raised in England, mm -hmm. and now you're in Australia. How was that like, that transition moving from different country to different country? Are you that type of person that it was easy for you to kind of adjust, mm -hmm. or was it kind of complicated? Well, definitely um, moving from Zim to the UK was easy, I guess, because I was really young, wasn't really sure what was going on. But UK to Australia was really tough. I was like 14 at the time, so I really oh, yeah. missed my friends. And like, we came in summer as well, so it was like blazing hot. Like, UK was freezing, and then Australia was hot and stuff. Yeah. And then also just going like into school, not really knowing anyone and stuff. Yeah. It, was, it was pretty tough, but like once I settled in, like it was pretty cool. So now it's easier for you to just adjust in any environment you kind of go to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, that's Having nice. Having bounced around so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And w because I assume when you go to different countries, you're exposed to different cultures. Yes. How did that affect your identity? Did it affect your identity? If it did, in, in what way did it affect it? Like, how would you say you are now as a woman? Like, how do you define yourself? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I've never really felt, like, fully... Um, you know, Zimbabwean or fully British or fully Australian. I kind of feel like I've kind of taken bits and bobs out of each culture and it's kind of become a larger part of who I am. Right. Um, and also just seeing how other people do their cultures and stuff, like especially in the UK and, and here, like there's so many different cultures. There's like Asian culture, like Hispanic culture, like lots of different things around. Mm. And I think it's given me like a greater respect of the way other people do life. Like I've become very open-minded and very like willing to learn. And I think there's so much that we can all learn from like other cultures and stuff. So yeah, yeah I guess my identity is like this melting pot of like different elements. Yeah, <laughs> so you take bits and pieces out of everything. Yeah. Okay. So now when it comes to mainstream media, there isn't a lot of representation of people of color. Mm. And that's something that I saw you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you're so passionate about this? Um, I believe representation matters because it has an effect on society, like, especially for me as a little girl growing up, like, wanting to be an actress and a singer and stuff, I didn't really see a lot of people that looked like me, so it kind of sent the message that there's, you know, there's something wrong with us, you know, like, our skin, our hair, everything like that, and now when I see people out there of colour, like, especially in the US, you know, doing their thing with their natural hair, singing, you know, songs that really have a powerful meaning, it just inspires me so much, so I want to be able to give that, especially to young Australian black girls, because their struggle is like completely different, and I want them to see that anything that they put their mind to is possible. Yeah. And you have a fashion brand called Amare House of Fashion, is it? Yeah, that's actually, it's my mom's brand, uh, but I'm kind of like a side piece. Yeah, what it. was yeah. the inspiration be behind the formation of that brand? What does it mean to you? Well, it means... Um, and I saw the jacket on your Instagram. Yes, that was really dope. Thanks. I was like, wow. Yeah, that's that was my good. Old little sad project. That was fire. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so Amari was like, the vision behind it was um, kind of taking the beauty of African culture and translating it into like the modern world, um, making it like accessible to everyone and also like affordable and things like that. So um, yeah, we just worked on a lot of different things for different women and stuff. We just wanted to make people feel really good about you know, their body and their shape yeah. in African attire. So. Let's talk a little bit more about music because mm -hmm. that's exactly how I came to find out about you. You were singing and you have an amazing voice. Mm -hmm. What inspired you singing? Because I know you sing at Global Heart Church. Mm -hmm. Oh, is I that, used to. Is that, yeah, yeah, you used to sing at Global Heart Church. Is that where you kind of found your voice or were you already singing before that? Like if you can remember, when did you start actually being like, this is me, like this is what I want to do. This is, I want to sing forever and I want to, you know, pursue this. Yeah, I think it started um, from a very young age because, like, on my mom's side, they're all very musical, very talented. Right. Um, and they all sang in church, so that's where I kind of found my passion for singing. Um, and around the age of, like, 12, I think I auditioned for Britain's Got Talent. I didn't get in, but 
um, that kind that of spot. That is big though for you to even go and do it though. It's a yeah, big move. I tried it, you know. Yeah. Um, I sang a Hannah Montana song, which probably wasn't the best What's choice. The song? Oh um, my lord. Best of both worlds. Oh wow. Yep. Thank you, Miley. Not um, bad. Yeah. So that kind of sparked something in me where I was like, this is actually what I really want to do mm -hmm. with my life, and I just kept like imitating a lot of artists like Beyonce and Adele, yeah. um, Corinne Those Bailey Ray, ones. like they all really influenced my singing and mm -hmm. yeah. What inspires your singing and your writing as well? Like, and also, what's your target audience? You know, sometimes when you write, you have specific people that you're trying to connect to. Yeah. You know, so first off, what inspires your singing and your writing? And also, who's your target audience? I think what inspires it is just wanting to put a positive message out there and share music that's actually going to stay with people for years. Like, I want to put songs out that will, like, stay in people's memory and, like, live with people as they age, as they grow older, you know, like, make things that are timeless. Mm -hmm. I think my target audience is really anyone that connects with my lyrics. Like, I guess my dream would be looking out into a crowd and seeing people of all colours, people of all, like, shapes and sizes, all walks of life, just, like, a beautiful family of you know, diverse people yeah. that just enjoy my music. Yeah. yeah. I was listening to Change Your Mind. Mm -hmm. Tears. Let's just take a moment <laughs> for that, honestly. That was beautiful. Thank you. That was emotional. That you had a lot of emotion, a lot of heart, a lot of soul, a lot of I don't I felt it. I really felt it when I was listening to it and I feel like you have an amazing voice. That song is fire and I feel like people should listen to it. Honestly. I'll put everything <laughs> like you need to listen to that song. What inspired that song? What does that song mean? Ooh, well, um, so that was inspired by a time in my life where basically I was really in love with somebody and this person just didn't have that feeling for me. Like, it had, like we had a great friendship and things, but there was never that um, mutual connection. So I kind of came to this place of like frustration where I was just like, you know, I just wish that you would just, you know, turn around. Change and, you know, your mind. Yeah, change your mind. Change your mind. Um, yeah, and it was just like this utter desperation like I was kind of just at the end of myself and that's where those lyrics came from oh it's a beautiful song honestly are you currently working on some new music and if you know when can we expect something from you musically what's going on there well um, I'm on a kind of like semi hiatus at the moment okay um, I'm working on some songs and trying to learn how to play piano as well so I can Ooh. hopefully go into doing live things yeah um, so it might be a while before I release anything new but yeah. um, I definitely want to do more live performances and play my own songs and yeah. stuff so hopefully I'll be in a, a pub or some random place near you soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and the thing like it's just amazing how multi-talented you are you're you know your hands are everywhere you know you you are putting so many things in different baskets and everything what inspires your work ethic where does that come from I think it definitely comes from my my parents mm -hmm. just seeing how hard they work to get out of um, you know living in Zimbabwe and, you know almost at the edge of poverty and making their way up um, and it inspires me to like really do the best that I can so that you know when when I have my own kids I can you know I can tell them you know what like I hustled I worked hard I didn't let anything stand in my way yeah and you can do the same sort of thing yeah what else is next for you maybe outside of music maybe you have other projects that you're working on just so for those people who are gonna be like I like this girl I want to keep up with this girl I want to know what else she's you know up to next so what else is next for you well, uh, I've actually started my own little jacket brand called um, Fourth Man Apparel. Yeah. Um, so I basically take like denim jackets, bomber jackets, and kind of like juice them up and add a little flavor to them. So I'm working on a couple little things at the moment, and I'm a very, I'm kind of slow with releasing things. Like I yeah. really like to make sort of things like good before Perfect. I like. Perfect. You want to get them it. just right? Yeah, yeah, definitely perfectionist. I get it from my mom. Um, <laughs> yeah, and otherwise in my personal life, I'm just studying at the moment. Um, yeah. Trying to get that degree. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Thank Honestly, you. it was an amazing time talking to you and getting to know you. Mm -hmm. And um, people, keep up with her. She's going to have a lot more stuff coming out. And I'm going to link every like your social media and everything so you can keep up with her. But definitely listen to Change Your Mind because it's a beautiful song. So thank you very much for being here. I'm very, very thank blessed you. to have you speak to me and everything. And uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, see ya.